I wanna take a few minutes and talk about micro adjustments to autofocus. I'm gonna do this with the 70D and just one prime lens to give you an example of how you test and then how you adjust. Right now I've got my super stable setup here and that's really important. Um, and I'm filming the back of the camera. So we're gonna switch to that in just a second. But over on the other side of the room, about 10 feet away, I have a little target indicator with a ruler taped to it. So you can see this, I'm using a spider lens cow. You really, you know, this wasn't a whole lot of money. I'll put a link to it down below. It's nice because it's got a little bubble level on the front. Um, and it's got a little ruler on the side that you actually can't see because I've taped a meter stick or a yardstick to it, which gives us a lot more room to view our results. Um, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. You, anything, the important thing here is that the target that you're shooting is large enough and, and at the exact same focal plane um, as the camera, meaning you don't want them to be off axis or at an angle. Um, the lens should be straight on to the target. And then you should give yourself something just to the right of the target that allows you to see behind it and in front of it evenly. Um, so you could set up a bunch of little chess pieces all in a line, um, something like that. But this angled ruler does work really nicely. And I've seen people do a cardboard box and just tape a ruler to the side of it. And again, you just wanna make sure that the ruler's not at an angle left or right, but straight on to the camera. Now, you wanna shoot at your maximum aperture. And the distance recommended from Canon, I mentioned this, is 25 to 50 times your focal length. Now that might sound like a lot, but remember your focal length is measured in millimeters. So you wanna multiply your millimeters times, your, uh, times 25 or 50 and to get your distances. For the 50 millimeter f1.4 lens that I have on here that I'm testing right now, that is somewhere between four to eight feet. My target right now is just about eight feet, actually just a little bit beyond that. And that's okay, so still a lot, it's fine. You want good light. You don't want the camera to be struggling in low light to focus. You want plenty of light so that it can focus cleanly each time and isn't a struggle. Now what we're gonna do first is just zoom in for a second here and make sure that we're lined up. Let me show you something else too. If you press the info button on the back, you get the little level indicator. Right now it is green, indicating that the camera is level. So you want that to be too. You wanna to remove as many variables as you can from any issues with focusing. So I've got it lined up with this target here. I'm gonna defocus and I'm gonna refocus and take a shot. I've got it on two second delay so that I'm not shaking it at all. And we have enough light, you can see my shutter speed up there, uh, one 250th of a second is fast enough that I'm not gonna get any handshake. Plus it is stable on this tripod. But you, again, eliminate the variables. Now, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna zoom in, in live view, I have uh, the single A of focus. I'm gonna defocus it. You don't have to do it all the way. I'm gonna hold the back button focus down until it gets focus again. And I'm gonna press and hold, or sorry, press and let it take a picture. So we've got two shots now with live view and we're gonna zoom all the way into these two shots. So 35 and 34. And you can see that there's very little variation between them. Microscopic changes in lightness on the ruler, but the um, sharpness is about the same. Now you might be thinking, wow, it's not very sharp. Folks, don't spend a lot of time zoomed all the way into your pictures. Very few cameras and lenses look good zoomed in all the way. I honestly don't know if we're at 100% or not when we zoom in all the way on the back of the camera. I'm not sure what level of magnification it is, um, but very few pictures look good all the way zoomed in. Now, especially at a maximum aperture. If we stop down some, we would see sharper images, but many lenses do not perform their best wide open. To do micro focus, micro adjustments to autofocus though, uh, it has no effect on live view. Uh, you need to do focusing through the viewfinder, which is your phase detection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn live view, well actually before I do that, I'm gonna go to AF quick. The little dots on the back of the screen, this is the same focusing method as looking through the viewfinder. You can see that the center dot is the one selected. I'm still gonna use the viewfinder because uh, I don't completely trust this. So I've turned live view off. I'm gonna stick my head in the way and make sure it's on the target, it is. I'm going to defocus a little bit, hold the button down to focus, press it, one shot. I'm gonna take three shots, defocus a little bit, 
hold the button down to focus, take a picture. Repeat. This is my third and final shot. Now I'm going to press play. I'm going to zoom all the way in. This is on the last shot. And you can see that it's softer than the live view, if you remember. And here is the second shot, a little bit better. Really watch those numbers. The numbers on the yard sticker, meter sticker is a good way. And the third shot, pretty soft. Now, our goal here is to look around and see if there's an area in the image along, actually, sorry, along the ruler that is sharper than right by the target. That is our indicator that the camera is focusing consistently in front of or behind our target. And that's what micro adjustments to autofocus fixes, a consistent focus in the wrong spot in front of or behind. Now it looks to me if we go down this ruler a little bit that it actually gets a little sharper down here. Look at those twos and threes. We can read that it's made in the USA. And we go back up here and it's definitely softer. 12 and 13, right around there is we want those to be the sharpest. Let's see if this is true on another image. So let's switch one forward. This is another viewfinder one. And it certainly looks sharper down there to me. I come back up, definitely softer up there. One more forward. Nope, nope, that was our second. So we go back to our first one, 36. And again, looks like the sharpest is down here. So now we're ready to say, well, it looks like it's consistently focusing in front of our target. So we're going to go into menu. We're going to go to autofocus. This is on the custom functions. Let me show that again. Custom functions on that last page. Autofocus section. And now I'm already on this. It's number 13. We have a lot of different options in here. You can get a little overwhelming. But on 13, we can set up a micro adjustments to our autofocus. I'm going to adjust by lens. I haven't tested any other lenses yet in this example, and I'm only going to do the 50 to give you an idea, but it is a good idea to test your lenses because each lens often focuses differently than another lens. It's smart enough to know what lens I have on, and when I put this lens back on, uh, it will remember whatever settings. So now I have minus 20 to plus 20 variants that I can adjust this by. I'm going to start by saying, well, it's focusing in front, so I want it to focus a little bit further towards the mountains, away from where I'm focusing. So I'm going to say, set. It's got plus 10 there. I'm confirming. I'm going to say, OK. How do I know plus 10? I don't. I am picking some place in the middle of the range that is 0 to 20, and we're going to see where we get these shots from. So I'm going to stick my head in the way. And I'm going to defocus, I'm going to refocus and take a shot. I'm going to do this three times again. It just helps reduce variables. Just taking one shot, there's just too many things that could cause the image to be off. And you don't want to make judgments based on just one image. I'm going to zoom all the way in to my third image. And now if I go down a little bit, definitely softer down there and now it looks to me like the 7 and 8 area is the sharpest of this image. Let's go forward one. Nope, I went the wrong way. That was our last one. So this one, 40. Yep. And this one it looks like 10, 11 is our sharpest. And let's go one more to the left. It looks like 10 and 11. Yep. So tells me that you can see that you know a plus 10 really only moved it up the ruler about four or five inches but remember these are at an angle so they're not complete inches and if i had paid attention in math class i could tell you the actual distance that had been changed now so we're going to go in and i'm going to do a little bit more maybe as much as 14. i'm going to say okay say okay again and now i'm going to take three pictures again Got my three pictures. I'm going to zoom in. Where's our sharpest? It looks to me like it's definitely moved much, much further up the ruler. Look at that coming down here on the bottom. Very soft. We move up 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I had to pick somewhere between 15 and 13. So I might have overshot it a little bit. Let's go back and look at our next one. 
That looks pretty good. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all look about equal sharpness to me. Let's go one more for our first one. And it looks a little bit more like 10, 11, and 12. So I may at this point call it even. Now, if you wanna be very careful and very precise, you should now repeat this test at a slightly different distances um, and see if you get the same result. So move the camera to that closer distance recommended um, so in this case, I'd move it about four feet away and test. Now I was doing all of this with a prime lens. If you wanted to test a variable, uh, or, or, sorry, a zoom lens, a uh, lens that zooms from some focal length to some other focal length, you should make tests at different. It becomes much more difficult because now think about it, you're doing a test at the wide focal length at a far distance and a close distance and a medium focal length and a, and a uh, far focal length. You will not be able to get precise and consistent results across that focal length, all those different focal lengths and distances. So you're gonna kinda have to average it out and decide what is gonna be best for you. I'll tell you one thing I'm finding, especially with the 70D, is that the live view focus is consistently, and this is true of other cameras as well, but you usually don't see is quite a degree of difference between live view and viewfinder, um, but live view focus is consistently sharp and on target, and the viewfinder distance, uh, viewfinder focus is not as much. I will be talking more about autofocusing and micro adjustments to autofocus, especially in the 70D very soon. If you've got any questions just, or comments you wanna say about this, please leave them down below. There are very expensive solutions, including computer monitors hooked up to your camera um, that can do some of this work for you. But if you just wanna do a quick test, this can give you a pretty good idea. And with, you know, we spent about 10 minutes, um, you can really dial in your lenses to be a little bit sharper um, at certain distances and focal lengths. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe.